Let's explore using that dot's anomaly detector on a set of categorical data. This data comes from the real-world use case produced by CDN usage. The data has been anonymized, and we've prepared a Jupyter Notebook as a way to walk through the server-side application. We begin by starting the novelty application itself. This is a server that runs in the background uh, and will accept uh, API calls. Now that the server is running, let's go look at the docs. A complete set of interactive documentation is included with the anomaly detector. And as you see here, there are administration endpoints and endpoints specifically for novelty scoring. This API endpoint is how we feed in a single observation. And you can see the full documentation for how to use the API loaded into the system as part of the application itself. If we click the Try It Out button, you could even feed it real data and interact with the system here. This is helpful especially for administration endpoints, uh, which allow you to control the use of the system. Back in our application, we've prepared data from real-world usage of a CDN. The data has been anonymized. Let's load it in and take a look. This is what the data looks like. The original data is in JSON format and includes quite a number of fields in it. Uh, there are a few numeric fields in there, but even some of these numeric fields really represent categorical data. So let's see how we can use categorical data for anomaly detection. In this example, we pull out some of these fields from the original data set and format them like you see here to pull out the client country code. Uh, the status code, the cache status, the client ISP, and the server IP. Once the JSON is reformatted into this format, it's in the structure that we need to feed it to the anomaly detection system. The anomaly detection system takes as an argument uh, any list of strings, or you can package those together into one bundle and send a list of lists of strings, in this case represented here as a JSON array. With our data prepared, let's go ahead and feed in the results. The data is streamed from data loaded in as part of the Jupyter Notebook into the server on the back end. Where it's loaded and processed, the results returned here in the Jupyter Notebook and available for further analysis. Our data set consists of 1 million observations, and we're going to pass them into the bulk API endpoint in batches of 100,000 at a time. We're actually going to feed in the data twice, once to produce streaming results as we observe each item one by one, and the second time, after all the data has been loaded, we're going to do some read-only results, as if we would have known what the data looked like ahead of time for a point of comparison. We've created several helper functions as a part of this demonstration, which are not shown in this notebook. You can download this complete notebook and experiment on your own from that.com. Let's speed up the video so that we can get to the end. Now that the data has been completely loaded into the system and all of our results collected, let's look at what those results are shaped like. Data comes back featuring several different uh, computations, but first we return this, the observation itself. So this is just an example pulled out of the result data set, uh, but we can see the observation that was fed in for this particular observation is returned as a part of the result. We compute a score. And then we compute several other metrics as a part of understanding how novel any particular activity is, including highlighting what is the most novel component. As a full observation consists of, in this case, uh, five different components, which one of them was the most novel? Why did it get the score that it got? And which part of it contributed the most to that determination? From here, let's look at the results in aggregate. So if we render a plot, this is going to sample from uh, the total results and just give an intuition for what the results look like. The values on the x-axis show the sequence, and the values on the y-axis show the score. You can see the streaming results that progress one at a time as we have something kind of like a moving window of data moving through like this. One observation at a time, one result returned at a time. Uh, even though we pass them in as bulk. The result of that uh, is a set of very well-distributed scores from real-world data. You can see this, the score up here close to 1. There are very few of them. The score is down much lower 
uh, show on the right-hand side violin plot, that the bulk of the data is pretty typical and not very novel. What if we could look after all the data was ingested and see the from an omniscient perspective, what does the data look like after it would have been ingested? We use the read-only endpoint for the anomaly detector to accomplish that. So we take the same data, read it in after the fact, and what you can see is that even though we produced results in the first case from streaming results in one at a time before the system had seen any data at all, the results are quite comparable even after we've seen all the data come in. The resulting violin shapes are quite similar. There's only a handful of uh, top observations and some of the same features show up in both data sets. So the streaming results that we get as, data, as it moves through the data set uh, are quite valuable. Now let's take a look at just a section of the streaming observations. Here we've subselected and, and not sampled, but looked at a range of a thousand observations, all of them plotted here. And again, the experience of streaming this data in one at a time uh, would produce one dot at a time. You can see those dots are spread well uh, up and down the plot here. Uh, very heavily weighted in lower scores, but every once in a while some of these scores really stand out. Additionally, we've color-coded these with a measure of surprise. The yellow items are the most surprising. They represent data that has never been seen before in the entire data set. And you, it's maybe no surprise uh, that the highest score comes from something we've never seen before. This is one particular example of a highly novel observation uh, that produced a very high score, very close to uh, the maximum of one. So let's take a look at that. That dot anomaly detector includes a visualization layer in the browser for looking at observations and understanding how they relate to the rest of the data. This really helps build an intuition for why scores are produced in the way that they are. So we're looking at our CDN observations here, and we have seen 800,294 by this point in time. You can see from the pop-up count. And as we work down our observation, you can see that uh, even though the total number of observations in the data set uh, were in the 800s, only 683,000 have been to the US with a status code of OK. A cache status of TCP hit, even fewer, but still 500,000 or more. And then by the time we get to this particular observation, it's the very first time we've seen an example in the data set from Fujifilm Manufacturing USA. It has a count of one out of 539,911. So this is why it was so surprising and why it returned such a high result. But that dot anomaly detection does a lot more than just watch for data that we've never seen before. It uses context for the rest of the system to understand when, even though we've never seen something before, it still could not be novel. As an example, here's a yellow observation with a rather low score. It scores below 0 0.2 and yet it's yellow. It has a, a surprise score of one. So we've never seen this observation before, but the total score produced by the system is actually quite low. How can this be? Well, in this particular example, you can see from the novel component on the bottom line that what made this so novel uh, was the value of the IP address at index four in the original observation. Let's go take a look and see if we can build an intuition for why that showed up with such a low score. Here's the observation itself. So it was, again, in the US, status code OK, a TCP miss. So a lot fewer of those, only 21,000 uh, by this point in the observation of the data. And then we get to the spectrum uh, as, as the internet service provider and see 637 observations by spectrum, OK. And this particular IP address, this was the, no the most novel component. But overall, it was not very novel. Here we can right click on a node and explore uh, subcategories and you can start seeing why this got its low score. We get a warning that you're about to render 516 nodes. If we go ahead and render them, you can see that for Spectrum, for this ISP if getting a TCP miss in the United States, it's actually normal to see new IS IP addresses. So new is not novel. In this case, new is normal. And that's why that dot anomaly detection system 
returns a very low score because it can use context of the rest of the structure of the data to understand when you actually have a true novel activity, whether new is normal, and you're actually dealing with a false positive. But of course, we want to ask this question of, well, when doing anomaly detection, what is the highest anomaly scores we've seen? So this is a subselecting of the results uh, that are only the highest scores, everything above 0.999. And you can see the system is still learning early on, so it requires no training, but it does take a little bit of time to adapt to the data. Every data set's a little bit different, but the first of these observations uh, that have the highest scores are from brand new countries. And you can see on the third line of the pop-up, the observation begins with a new country code every time, KN, NG, AR, BE. These are brand new countries never seen in this data set at all by this point in time. Well, there's only so many countries in the world, so soon by before too long, we'll see them all, and they stop showing up as anomalous. So what's the next highest score? In this case, it's the most novel observation in the entire data set, where in the United States, we saw, for the first time, a forbidden status code. So let's explore a little further. Generate a link so that we can go view it in the browser. Here's the most novel observation in the entire data set, which wasn't novel because of a country. Instead, it was really the forbidden report. And so the first time we've seen any forbidden status in the United States after 928,000 observations. So this stands out as truly novel. And if you were running a network operations center, center and monitoring the content going out the network, uh, if you got this sort of a report saying that data from this server IP from this ISP produced a forbidden status, you might want to go investigate. And here you see the novel detection system operating live in a streaming fashion on real categorical data. If you'd like to learn more, visit that.com.